So you're a wealthy banking tycoon in the early 20th century and you have a big problem. It's the rise of capitalism and you have this massive financial empire, but you simply can't find enough obedient workers to keep the profit rolling in. Back then, most of America was still rural and most people worked on farm. They didn't know how to work in a bank or on Wall Street. They weren't conditioned to clock in and out or to chase after money. So you needed a way to educate the population on a massive scale so they could come work for you. But you didn't want to educate them too much. Now, did you? Remember, knowledge is dangerous. There's a reason why slaves weren't allowed to learn how to read or write. If you're going to educate the masses, you have to tread very carefully. Teach them too much and they'll become too ambitious, too independent too much of a threat to your wealth and power. Instead, you want to teach them just enough so they keep your empire running smoothly. You want them to be loyal, obedient, and easy to control. So what do you do? You helped pioneer the modern day financial education system. You created business schools, accounting programs, and finance degrees. You funded scholarships and grants to entice young people to study money in banking. All of a sudden, every young person could just enroll in a free university funded by good old banking tycoon like yourself. To the rest of the world, you look like a saint. You're giving free education to all those uncivilized, ignorant Americans. But you and I know the truth. By dangling the prospect of a free education in front of millions of young people, you were able to trick them into relinquishing their dreams and ambitions to the banks. That way, for four to six years of a student's most formative and most important years, you get to condition them to be exactly who you want them to be. You get to decide what they learn and don't learn. You get to decide how they see the world. You get to condition them to be scared, to be fearful, to be obedient, to not question the status quo. You get to teach them that if they don't follow your orders exactly to the T, they are a failure. Because these are the traits that make for a good banker, a good financier, a good employee in the financial industry. And it worked. By giving every young person access to free, standardized financial education, you were able to solve the labor problem in America. Now, every generation that came after it would go into school filled with innocence, creativity, and joy, and they would come out of school as an obedient worker that doesn't want to rock the boat. The modern financial education system is predicated on the idea of academic ability. And there's a reason the whole system was invented in the early 20th century. It all came into being to meet the needs of capitalism. Ah, yes, our entire financial education system today was created because wealthy banking tycoons needed more workers. But it wasn't just the banking tycoons. Now loads of other wealthy American dynasties poured billions of dollars into creating the modern day financial education system we have today. These are the same wealthy families behind big oil, big pharma, big food, and they all wanted to provide you with the free conditioning. I mean, education while they send their own kids to Ivy League schools. As one wealthy financier once said, I don't want a nation of entrepreneurs. I want a nation of workers. And that's exactly what they got. But what does this mean for us today? Well, it means that the financial education we receive in schools is not necessarily designed to help us become financially independent or successful in the long run. Hence why on my main channel, I teach you how to trade options and make consistent weekly income because this is something that I had to learn by myself despite getting a finance degree. So America and education doesn't really want you to be free or independent because they don't actually teach you because they deliberately hold back the real information. Rather, it is designed to make us good workers for the financial industry to keep the capitalist machine running smoothly. And the consequences of this are far reaching. It means that many of us come out of school with a very narrow understanding of money and finance, and we are ill-equipped to navigate the complex world of personal finance. We may know how to calculate interest rates or create a budget, but we lack the critical thinking skills necessary to truly understand the financial system that governs our lives. 
Furthermore, the financial education we receive is often incomplete or biased. We may learn about the benefits of investing in the stock market, for example, but not about the risks involved or the potential downsides of this strategy. We may learn about credit scores and the importance of maintaining good credit, but not about the predatory practices of the credit industry or the ways in which debt can be used to keep people trapped in poverty, or how to use more complex instruments that are actually not that complex like options to make weekly consistent income. The financial system is not new to controversy and it has a long history of exploitation and corruption. In the early 1900s, industrialists and businessmen such as John D. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, and J.P. Morgan began to funnel their wealth into education. They funded universities, medical schools, Ivy League schools, and public high schools, resulting in America's love affair with college degrees. College graduation has never been more valuable than it is today, and soon other business tycoons started jumping in on the action. By 1905, Andrew Carnegie, the steel magnet, founded the Carnegie Foundation for the investment of teaching not because he wanted people to learn about the world and become innovators, but because he needed mind managers, operation managers, repairmen, smelters, and railroad conductors. The public started to catch on to all this big money moving into education, and by 1914, the National Education Association said that we deal with the Lord, the activity of the Carnegie and Rockefeller Foundation agencies, not in any way responsible to people and their effort to come our state educational institutions to fashion after conception into standardize our courses of study and to surround the institutions with conditions which men is true academic freedom. But infiltration of education had picked up too much steam and there was no way it was going to slow down now. By 1918, every single state started requiring kids to complete elementary school and it just picked up from there, from standardized tests to Carnegie funded textbooks to Department of Education to labeling and medicating kids that don't do well in this Rockefeller motto of education. Frederick T. Gates, whom John D. Rockefeller created the General Education Board with, put it perfectly when he explained that what he envisions for America's education system. In our dream, we have limitless resources and the people yield themselves for perfect hostility to our molding hand. The present educational conventions fade from our minds and unhampered by tradition, we work our own goodwill onto a grateful and responsible rule folk we shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers or men of learning or of science. We are not to raise up among them authors or writers, poets, or men of letters. We have not searched for embryo great artists, painters, musicians, nor will we cherish even the humbler ambition to raise up amongst them lawyers, doctors, preachers, statesmen, of whom we know have ample supply. Rockefeller wanted an education system that didn't search for the intrinsic gifts and talents in each of us, one that didn't pump out philosophers, authors, artists, or musicians. No, our modern day education system was designed for one thing and one thing only, to pump out mindless, thoughtless, standardized, dare I say, slaves. John D. Rockefeller put it even more succinctly. I don't want a nation of thinkers, I want a nation of workers. And if you look around today with all the fear and all these debts, all these years of education, and yet you come out not even knowing the basic fundamentals of how to survive in this world, like how to find a lifelong partner, save, make money, invest, and file taxes, then you can see that Rockefeller got exactly what he wanted. So how do you escape the systemic design of society to get you to slave away forever? You escape it by finding a way to make a lot of money without having to work super hard, like all these other docile workers, or by starting a business, or by learning a high income skill. One high income skill is trading, and you can check out the link in the description for real passive safe income. You'll see in the link in the description exactly how I'm making over $40,000 per month. And again, I'm not gambling or doing anything risky. I'm doing it safely, passively, and every single week and every single month. But regardless, I'm just here to educate you. Thanks so much for watching. Would you rather live as a farmer in rural America in 1920 or work in a submarine and not see the sun for two years? Let us know in the comments section below.